A lot happened over at MetaConnect this week. We're going to do a full deep dive for you guys, get an interview in that I think is very relevant to what's happening in this space. You're going to love it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. I want to kind of jump right into it today. We'll go to a clip here that gives a little bit of where AR and VR is heading. Take a look. We declared our open store five months ago, and since then, we have 10 times more apps in the Meta Horizon store. In just a few short, anxious weeks, this ecosystem is about to get even bigger, much bigger. All the innovation, performance, at this price that made Quest 2 the biggest hit in the whole industry, buckle up. And to get all of you just in there, we have completed the open store transition we started in April. App Lab is done. We have finally cured curation. All right, so this is a big deal because it's going to impact Web3, I think, in a very big way. One of the projects in Web3 that could be very pivotal on how this starts to transcend into what's happening over at Meta is a, is a project called Mawari. Let me jump into a clip about them. What we focus on is in delivering in what we call true 3D streaming. This is a streaming directly from a, a cloud server. We can actually uh, resize, move, uh, manipulate as if you had a, this real stream object into, the, into your AR scene. And finally, split rendering. So what is a split rendering? It allows us to render some things uh, on the device, like UI or simple geometry, as you see here in the example, and asynchronously and in parallel render on the cloud the content that uh, needs attention, like uh, this uh, high quality uh, digital human. Now the devices that we support is the Xreal, the Quest 3, the Magic Leap 2, and the Vision Pro. Uh, it's interesting because what they're getting ready to do, I think, is really start to shift this whole idea around spatial streaming in a big way. So we asked Luis to join us today, and he's coming in from Japan. So great to see you, Luis. How are you? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, excited to be here. So, uh, Luis, I want to just kind of kick off a little bit around Mawari as a company and the fundraising round that you guys, of course, initiated. Tell me a little bit about what you've been able to do so far. Sure. Okay. So we started the company in 2017. Uh, here in Tokyo, Japan, they wanted uh, to stream a digital human, uh, a digital assistant that was fully AI powered. Uh, I mean, today in 2024, we have LLMs, ChatGPT, so it, it doesn't sound like that uh, crazy idea. Like in 2018, it's like that's way too in the future. That powerful AI backend plus the 3D rendering is not possible to be rendered by a whole phone phone or a mobile smart glass and it needed to be so so that's uh, that's how we started the company there was no solution so we went with whole uh, a lot of years almost six years of uh, R&D yeah I think well when you look at it some of the clients I know that you guys are working with uh, companies like Netflix this is kind of where the future of this could go this was a, a tweet by John Wu uh, CEO of Ava Labs they were talking about how creators potentially could do a lot more content, especially when we start to see spatial content, and they're already kind of going in that direction. Um, I'm kind of curious, when you look at that, do you feel that many of these companies are ready for this kind of technology to really advance forward? Is, is the market ready to go? Uh, I'll be very honest. Uh, there are very few companies that actually, I would say, uh, are ready. Uh, one of them is uh, Meta and Hannah discussing MetaConnect. Most of the companies have been seeing on the previous generation of content, even video games, because you have video games uh, here today uh, that are still being displayed in into a 2D screen. So there still need to be a, a huge leap forward in uh, evangelization and education. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, of the companies that are ready for this next step is uh, Meta that has been for many years investing in builders to, to, to take the industry forward. Talk to me a little bit about the node sale. How, how does it work versus things like hyperscalers? You know, if you look at AWS or Google, et cetera, explain to me a little about what you guys are doing there. Sure, 3D content needs 
real-time rendering. And for that, we need GPUs, right? They are either located on device or on uh, in the cloud. For devices to become slim, like the classes that you're wearing or like the Orion, you cannot have uh, such powerful compute unit uh, on device. Otherwise, it becomes fat as the Apple Vision right. Pro, right? The solution is to have edge devices near cloud devices doing the processing, which includes mm -hmm. graphics rendering and, and so on and so forth. But when the screen is in your eyes, mm -hmm. actually any any single artifact that the, the content stopped or, or something happened, it writes motion sickness. Yeah. So that, that being established, the latency between the rendering unit and the device needs to be very low. Uh, I will be very bold saying that we did it with hyperscalers back in 2021, but we couldn't bottleneck with them. So a CFO would not approve to invest billions of dollars on uh, architecture that is not yet, uh, yeah. the, the use case is still needs to be a forward looking company like Meta that they know that's the future and they have invested billions in making the all this ecosystem that they're building. As a startup, we had uh, two options, uh, either wait, <laughs> and keep on stealth mode and try to survive, or uh, actually find an, an alternative. And, and we looked at Web3. Uh, at the time, 2021, we have uh, seen Helium and, and Render Network. They were inspiration to us because it was like, okay, wow, it is possible to bootstrap the supply and actually grow a, a network really, really, really quickly. So. This is where the node cell, as, as you're mentioning, comes in. As our next step to really start scaling our network, now that we have a demand and, and proven use cases, it's an open call for everyone to provide, provide their compute power, and, and you will get rewarded for the job that you provide. So think about yeah. like it's an Uber or an Airbnb, but for uh, edge computing and special streaming. Yeah, and I think one of the things our audience follows this topic quite a bit. They've been uh, analyzing. We've done so many videos around render cloud technology of being able to do decentralized compute. And this has been one of the kind of the holy grails of gaming. So I think what you guys are doing is is right in line with where that's going. And one of the things I'm kind of curious about when you look at projects like render who have been able to be very closely tied to NVIDIA, you look at projects in the IoT space like Helium you mentioned, what really makes you guys different in comparison of cloud compute? Uh, okay, so we established that a render does offline uh, rendering per se. Uh, less that. What we do is real time. You open up your smartphone or you put mm -hmm. on the glasses. Just like I say, you press play on Netflix, you expect the content to be done, right? Within less than a second, we need to render in frames in real time for you. And, and at a very low latency, our average uh, uh, tolerance is uh, 32 milliseconds. So just think about like that is happening in 32 milliseconds to orchestrate the GPU, uh, stream it back to you, to your glasses, send it to the server the, of your position and other mm -hmm. things of uh, interaction. So it's, it's a very different architecture. They are off offline, we are real time. And you look at gaming in general, I noticed you guys were over at Solana Breakpoint. When you look at Web3 gaming and some of the things that are happening uh, within the Solana ecosystem, and I'm this is kind of leading into at some point you're going to select a blockchain if you do take this onto the blockchain. What kind of blockchain would you be looking for? Would it be something that has high speed throughput? Are you looking at something like a Solana, maybe a SUI? Where, where are you guys going with this? Okay, you need a super fast blockchain. So let's imagine that we orchestrate the GPU, uh, we find we do the streaming job, and then once the streaming job is finished, we collect the data that we send to a validator, uh, okay. a group of validators yeah. that, that will do consensus and say, okay, yeah, this was a job with the right quality of service approved, and then there's the distribution of, of the rewards. That, that system will be based on... on uh, but that system will be based on what? On so I'll, I'll just say it again. So since you mentioned about our appearance in, in Breakpoint, uh, basically, yes, it's that's the hint that, that I'm launching on Solana. Okay, all right, on Solana. Okay, so um, I've got a clip here that I want to play. This is uh, at MetaConnect, and they're they're talking about 
the potential of various different platforms within the Web3 community starting to move into possibly the Quest. Take a look and I want to get, get your opinion. And starting sure. today, our open store, it fully welcomes 2D and spatial apps. Horizon OS, it's now open for mobile style development. If you can build for Android, you can build for Meta Horizon OS. It lets you take your normal mobile app and just break out a flat land, take over with 3D environments, add atmospherics, play immersive media, and so much more. All right, so some of the companies in Web3 obviously would be tied into this would be things like Magic Eden, you look at within that ecosystem, obviously Phantom, OpenSea, all those potentially have an opportunity here. What is your opinion on this uh, coming to Quest? Do you think that would happen? I see this is a very similar strategy of uh, what Apple is doing with uh, mm -hmm. turning all their apps ecosystem into the Vision Pro. Right, yeah. So I see huge potential with this, uh, not only if, uh, for the Web3, but in general, like the all Android app application, there could be very interesting things. And it's a stepping stone into full immersive uh, 3D, which is what is powered by the game engines. All right, so I want to play a click, clip here because we're, we're thinking avatar upgrades here. Uh, and, and really the question is, you know, when you look at Meta, would they allow things like NFT avatars potentially in some of these platforms and games? Let me go to this clip real quick. We've been making improvements to our meta avatars over the last few years, and I'm very excited to be launching the next generation of meta avatars coming on October 1st. They work across Meta Horizon OS, as well as Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and soon WhatsApp. And an expanded set of options to design and fit clothing powered by Gen AI. So this is gonna be a great way for Avatars to be able to adjust to the environment just as the user is jumping into your world. We're also introducing new forms of fantastical avatars to build special characters unique to your worlds. Captain America. All right, so the idea is, I'm kind of curious, would these, would these scans be compatible with uh, what you guys are doing at Moari in terms of the rendering capacity? Uh, totally. Uh, I mean, as I mentioned, we started working with uh, a digital human and that's what we're focusing for the last seven years. There's opportunity for NFTs, uh, totally, all the clothing and, and having uh, the privilege of have your own unique avatar. What we do with Ma Maori uh, technology is that you have one master asset quality and then with uh, our um, SDK, special streaming SDK for Unity and Unreal, depending on the targets, we actually just, uh, with the streaming, just like a, an, a 2D streaming, for example, if you have a smartphone right. with a low connection, then the, the stream adapts to that. So we we, we actually, uh, so yes, it would be totally compatible with what we do. All right, so, and with that, I, I'm, this is kind of connecting to this clip that I, I want to play for you. This is uh, Hyperscape, and it was revealed. And the reason is, is there's a handful of Web3 projects out there. I want to get your opinion if this kind of changes the landscape of those Web3 projects. Take a look. We're also bringing photorealistic spaces to the metaverse. And we call this Hyperscape. And the way this works is you can use your phone to scan a room and then recreate it, or you can step into a room that someone else has scanned and shared. This one is the studio, I think, where Green Day recorded Dookie. Um, in fact, I encourage you to go download the Horizon Hyperscape beta app in the US and try it out yourself today. It's pretty wild. So the advancement is, is significant that we're seeing. Uh, leaps and bounds ahead, I think, of Apple and where this be, could be going. So you're saying those kinds of scans would eventually be able to make it through Mawari and be able to transcend on your, on your compute model that you're using right now for real-time streaming. Cor correct. Uh, well, we focus more in, in AR. So rooms are more static. So yes. actually they could potentially be rendered on device, but when you want mm. to stream your, your digital presence into that uh, specific scene, 
that's where dynamic streaming and real-time rendering uh, comes more in, into play, and that's where we focus on technology. There's only a handful of companies out there and projects. Over is one of them that is even doing anything similar to this. Would this kind of technology that you're, you guys are doing, would this kind of supplant the, the vision of where Over is going? I'm kind of curious in the comparison between the two. Mm, not precisely. I think it's kind of like that infrastructure layer. So any uh, like uh, content overlay on mm-hmm. onto an AR escape is is our partner in the end because okay. we provide the underlying infrastructure. One last clip for you here, Luis. Um, this is Meta Orion and its reveal, uh, which if many of you guys have not seen Meta Connect, this was the big announcement that Mark Zuckerberg did around the new headset direction that they're taking for XR, AR, VR. So take a look. And I have something that I want to show you today. Yeah, thanks for keeping them secure. Just hold that. Just hold okay. That. This is Orion. And if I do say so, the most advanced glasses the world has ever seen. No wires, wide field of view, holographic displays. They're gonna do hand tracking and eye tracking. But there's one more way that you're gonna be able to interact with them that is really pretty neat. A neural interface. You just send a signal from your brain to the device. When people have gotten to try out these glasses, we've shown them to a, a handful of people at this point. It's like, it's like an emotional experience. This was, I believe, you know, the, the iPhone moment for Meta. They, they have introduced something that nobody has ever seen in a framework and in a package that is easily acceptable. And you can definitely tell how quickly they're advancing, you know, the technology itself and also the device. So do you think Apple is in just scramble mode at this point, trying to figure out what to do to kind of combat what's happening with Meta? Not only Apple, but the others. Everybody, Uh, yeah, pretty much everybody. Yeah, this is such a leap forward, but it it exists like the field of view and all the mm-hmm. qualities. This is uh, honestly what it wanted to do last year with the Vision Pro, but this yep. also, also that's why they went through video faster. Yeah, I think this is uh, one of those leap forwards in time, you guys. Uh, if you have not, uh, if you're in the technology field and you understand where computing is going, the convergence that's happening now between Web3, companies like Muari, obviously Meta, and then many of the partners, because I think we're going to see a massive amount of partners coming into this space, whether it's Netflix's of the world, a lot of the content streaming devices, but also the gaming companies. So I think you guys, Luis, are going to be in the right place at the right time. So congrats on everything you guys are doing. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a long journey. Uh, I, I, I have to say that the XR industry has had its ups and downs, and it, it's sticking to and we see finally with this breakthrough that the, actually it's the iPhone moment and it will just yep. only uh, skyrocket from. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Luis uh, Ramirez here coming in from Mawari. Thank you for stopping in today. We appreciate it. Likewise. Uh, very good interview. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. All right, you guys, make sure and dial in to the Diamond Circle. It's our place that you guys can get additional content and it's private. It's our own private group. We'll leave a link down below. And of course, follow me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.